OAP Psychology students, it is the year 2020, and of course, everyone will remember this year as the year of the pandemic with a brand new type of AP testing. This year, you're only going to be writing the FRQ, and I am going to give you instructions. I have been an AP grader. I feel very confident in my instructions, and I think if you follow these steps, and of course, you study, that you will be... Um, successful. So let's start with some tips. First of all, read the question carefully and underline the keywords. Look for any terms that the question is asking about. And really what the AP um, questions are designed to do is to see that you can apply the concept that you've learned in this class into real life scenarios. And so make sure that you understand what it is you're looking for. Answer the question in full sentences, making sure that you apply the concept correctly to the prompt. This is super important. The full sentences. I have actually given zeros to people who didn't start with a capital letter and end with a period. They must be in full sentences. You may answer in bullet points. Uh, I'm going to talk about the point system in just a few minutes, but um, there are generally anywhere from six to eight points on the free response question, and you may use a bullet point for each one. In fact, we prefer that you do because it makes it easier to read. But again, uh, full sentences. Okay. Uh, wait, did I mention full sentences? Yes, I think I did. Okay. Make sure you are answering the question. Uh, sometimes people will do a really good job of defining every term perfectly. And in fact, I remember I had a question when you had a student that defined all eight terms absolutely perfectly. But now once did they refer back to the prompt and that student got a zero on the exam? which I, I felt really bad because I know all they needed to know was that they had to refer back to the question. So this year's exam will have two prompts. The first prompt will be worth eight points. That means there are going to be eight terms or concepts that you have to apply in some way to the scenario that they give you. Now, I have no idea what that will be, but I'm going to give you an example. I made one up tonight just off the top of my head. The second is worth six points, and this is concerned with analyzing a study and quantitative data. You are going to want to do something like review what a mean, median, and mode are, uh, look at uh, what statistical significance means and standard deviation, and maybe go through your textbook and look at some examples in, usually in the first, first or second chapter of the text that talk about analyzing quantitative data. Okay, so let's go to our practice question here. Hazel has been studying hard for her 2020 AP exam in psychology. Psychology. She is practicing the vocabulary she has learned and has been trying to apply the concepts to real life. A, describe how the following may help Hazel as she is studying for the exam. So here's point one, positive reinforcement. Point two, selective attention. Point three, the hippocampus. Point four, the big five trait of conscientiousness. Now, when you are answering this question, um, you will want to use all of these and then finally internal locus of control and talk about how they are helping hazel as she's studying for the exam part b hazel's feeling a lot of stress as she's preparing for all of her ap exams she's getting really cranky and feels tense all the time how might the following explain how she is feeling the general adaptation syndrome that is point um six and the sympathetic nervous system, that is point seven. And finally, the night before the test, Hazel has a hard time sleeping. She has read that having a bad night of sleep is correlated with doing poorly on a test. So after the test, she concludes that she will get a low score on the test. What is the problem with Hazel's conclusion? That is point eight. So the points are really clearly laid out for you. They're usually listed. Uh, they might not have a letter on them or a number or anything, but they generally there are two or three parts. There might even be just one part. But keep in mind, you are to address exactly what that part of the prompt is talking about in your response. So let's go through a sample uh, response. Um, so. This is the part that is what will help Hazel as she's studying. So when Hazel is studying for an AP Psychology exam, she could set up a system where she rewards herself by staying off of her phone and then checking Instagram after each time she spends one hour studying. Checking Instagram acts as a reinforcement for Hazel, and so this will increase the likelihood that she will study for her test. I want to emphasize the word reinforcement here. When we're talking about operant conditioning, it will be important that you use the word reinforcement because reward in the past has not been uh, has not been accepted. Um, so uh, that is for the first point. Did she get it right? Yeah, she did. 
Um, second, it will be very important for Hazel to be in a place that is quiet to study for her test. However, she's staying at home and she has six younger siblings at home. It will be important for her to block out the sound of her siblings fighting and to focus on her study and through selective attention. So uh, she doesn't define selective attention here, but she applies it in, um, in a manner that shows that she knows what selective attention is. Her hippocampus will help her study because it is the part of the brain that is involved in language comprehension. Oh my goodness, how could she forget what the hippocampus is? Um, that's not the part involved in language, com language comprehension, but you know what, she gave it a shot. And that's the point. If you see a term and you don't understand what it is, it doesn't matter, just give it a go and uh, you might be right. And sometimes uh, just using the context of the question, you might be able to come up with something that is right. As it turns out, it's the Wernicke's area that's responsible for language comprehension. The hippocampus is responsible for learning and memory. So uh, it's kind of ironic that she would miss the hippocampus, but you know, whatever, it's Hazel. Okay, Hazel is very conscientious on the big five scale. This means that she's very responsible and will set up a good schedule to study for her exam. She got that one right. Conscientiousness is just, the, she applied that term correctly. Finally, Hazel has an internal locus of control. This means that she feels that she can control her destiny and that her efforts will make a difference. Therefore, she will continue to study because she believes in herself. So um, this is a correct application of the term internal locus of control. So for the first part of the exam, she got four out of five points correct. All right, moving on to part B of the exam. Hazel is nearing the exhaustion stage of the general adaptation syndrome. This means that if Hazel does not get a break soon, she might become sick. She needs to try to get some good sleep and take breaks in her studying. Again, good application of the general adaptation syndrome. Hazel's sympathetic nervous system is aroused from all the pressure she is feeling to do well on her AP test. This means that she is producing extra adrenaline and her heart rate and respiration are increased. So there again, she got the point right, right because she is talking about how um, why she's feeling cranky and restless. And then part C, Hazel should not conclude that she did poorly on the test. And after thinking about it, she remembered something her teacher always used to say, never confuse correlation with causation, right? So in other words, just because she did not get a good night's sleep doesn't mean that she'll score poorly on the exam. We can never conclude that correlation equals causation. So she would have gotten seven out of the eight points at the exam. Now, once these uh, exams are read, what they do is they uh, scale them so that, um, you know, uh, so usually they, they usually fall in a normal curve and uh, through whatever formula they have, which I honestly have no idea what it is, um, they will determine what a five, what a four, what a three, what a two, and what a one is. But if you follow these tips, honestly, I think, and you study, of course, I think you will do well on the FRQ. Remember, you don't need a conclusion. You don't need a thesis. You don't need a conclusion. Just go straight to the question, apply the concepts, and do it in a clear and concise manner. I just talked really quick because I have a lot to do tonight still, but I just wanted to get this video done and good luck you guys. 2020 is a special year. For those of you who are seniors, I know this is a tough time and um, you know, and I'm sorry that, that things are not going um, as we would all hope for you. And anyways, take care. Good night.